Mega Marino. His name is Mega Marino. Mega Man Maker Rolling Cutter. So it's pretty versatile, uh, has some good angles and decent DPS. Rolling Cutter allows you to hit enemies or objects on the floor above you or underneath you, depending on where you're standing. This Fan Fiend takes 5 shots to kill with Mega Buster, but Rolling Cutter does 2 damage, so it only takes 3 hits to kill, plus you can fast cancel for more damage. Rolling Cutter also has homing properties, so as long as Mega Man is ahead of it, it will always follow him naturally. One of the best parts about Rolling Cutter is its ability to stun lock enemies, so because of its active frames, you can keep Rolling Cutter locked onto Cutman, and over and over and over and over again, he will just keep getting stun locked and not be able to do anything. Good weapon. Mega Man 1 Super Arm, given to you by Gutsman. It's a big box that you throw, and you can also do a spread shot, but be careful, you can kill yourself. Super Arm is one block, but consists of four pieces, each dealing two damage. Big guys have 20 health, and you can kill a big guy with five two hits, or three eight hits. Now that's a lot of damage. Guts blocks also have different textures and skins, so be on the lookout for these when you're in a level. You might need to grab one. Super Arm boxes can also be stacked up to five on one screen at a time. You can also use Super Arm to chain jumps with boxes, but it's pretty tight. And now the good stuff. You have Quick Kills. So I'm not sure if this still works in the current update, but there was a time, and maybe still is a time, where you can kill bosses with one Boom. box. Mega Man 1 Ice Slasher, given to you by Iceman. It shoots horizontally, you get 28 hits of it, and it freezes stuff. Ice Slasher does not actually deal any damage to any enemies, but it does freeze them, allowing you to manipulate their position and get around them easy. There's a lot of objects in Mega Man Maker which can be frozen with Ice Slasher, allowing it to interact in a new way, such as walking on lava or passing through it, or freezing fire pillars, allowing you to jump on top of them, or even firewalls. Or if you're feeling super fancy, you can just use Ice Slasher to freeze enemies or objects and do some really cool setups. Some say this weapon's cool as ice. Ice Slasher does do damage to bosses, however there's a specific interaction with Freeze Man in which we're going to deal damage with Mega Buster and he's going to heal back to full health for 4 healing. And then the same time we damage him he heals. What? Mega Man 1 Hyper Bomb, originally given to you by Bomb Man, you get 14 bombs doing big boy damage. Hyper Bomb on impact does 4 damage, so enemies with 10 health like this bunny die in 3 hits, and enemies like this big eye die in 5 hits. It's powerful. On impact, Hyper Bomb explodes with crazy splash damage taking up a big part of the screen. The splash damage is also really good for bosses, as it hits the boss's first frame available. He's getting hit by the splash damage, not the actual bomb. Even shielded enemies don't stand a chance against Hyper Bomb. Hyper Bomb also has three different angles. You can hold up and shoot, which brings the bomb close to you. You can press no direction and shoot, which puts it in the middle. Or you can hold down and shoot, and it makes it go really far away. You can even make basketball levels. Kobe! Mega Man 1 Firestorm, originally given to you by Fireman, shoots for 2 damage and also creates a fire barrier for 2 damage. And because the projectile and the shield stack, you can deal 4 damage in succession with fast cancels. Firestorm is so strong, it also acts as a pseudo shield which protects Mega Man and obliterates anything that he touches or it touches. And you can kill stuff just by sliding. There's so many interactions with Firestorm, including shooting it underwater, hopping ice blocks with the weapon or the shield, shooting TNT crates that can explode, or also igniting oil, which be careful, don't touch! 
Firestorm is also very good against bosses because it essentially doubles the damage of the Mega Buster, which is one damage. And you can do two damage against bosses because it's hitting with the projectile and the shield. So it's only 14 hits instead of 28, so you kill him nice and fast. Mega Man 1 Thunderbeam, originally given to you by Elecman, shoots for two damage in three different directions. Pretty versatile weapon. Thunderbeam is very good against most enemies in the game, but here is going to demonstrate the difference between using one piece of the Elect Beam which deals two damage, and using the full three pieces. There's a lot of enemy spam in Mega Man Maker, and this weapon deals with it. I would say the best part of this weapon is the ability to shoot enemies up and down. So you're going to see you can kill enemies with one hits, two hits, three hits, or even more than four hits. Thunder Beam also has countless interactions in Mega Man Maker, including breaking guts blocks when you shoot it, you can start laser setups with it, you can also pull magnetic boxes with it, and Springman has a special interaction in which if you shoot him, you get pulled and he turns into a cinnamon bun. Time Slow, given to you by Time Man and Mega Man Powered Up, does no damage and slows enemies. Even though Time Slow does not do any damage, you can still slow enemies and move around them with ease. This weapon allows for some great platforming. Time Slow is very good against bosses if the boss is set with the primary weakness. You'll see that it actually does 8 damage each, so you only need to hit the boss 4 times, but it is slow. Like, really slow. I would say the best use of Time Slow is for specifically objects. Just look how you can get around most of these gimmicks. Okay, okay. The actual best use of Time Slow is to remix all of your favorite songs in Mega Man Maker. I mean, just listen to these brand new songs we have. Nice and slow. Oil Slider from Mega Man Powered Up, originally given to you by Oil Man, shoots for 2 damage, or you can also ride it in the form of a surfboard for 4 damage. Also one of the best mobility weapons in the game. Oil Slider kind of shoots like Mega Buster, but with a slight arc, so you mainly just want to ride through enemies in surfboard form. You take 0 damage from most enemies in this form. Oil Slider also allows you to do wall climbs. Shown here is a single tile wall climb with an oil one tile between Mega Man and the wall. Against enemies, Oil Slider does 2 damage with a buster shot or 4 damage in oil board form, except against bosses, it's 1 damage per shot and 2 damage in board form. This is called double oil, you shoot 2 oils against the wall and you ride it nice and smooth, and then the finale here, you can shoot oil on a spike and actually jump off the spike and survive. Mega Man 2 Bubble Lead, originally given to you by Bubble Man, does 3 damage and shoots in a little bit of an arc. Bubble Lead is a little bit awkward, but it does scale down walls pretty well. I would say the best part about Bubble Lead is its DPS, which is damage per second. It does 3 damage at a time, and once the bubble kills an enemy, it keeps going, and you can kill enemies really fast. Bubble Lead also has some interesting interactions with fire. As shown here, there's fire that could one-hit KO you or just damage you, and there's also fire that respawns, so you gotta know what's what, or you will be burned alive. A side benefit from Bubble Lead is the ability to use it to see in the dark. You can actually scale the floor with it and check for holes, and it's very helpful. So basically, you're a firefighter and a pit checker. Mega Man 2 Air Shooter, originally given to you by Airman, shoots three separate projectiles, dealing two damage each. Shown here is a 5 health enemy, a 10 health enemy, and a 20 health enemy. When you use Buster, you have to shoot them with that many hits until they die. However, with Air Shooter, they do two damage each, and you can stack them up to six damage, so you eliminate enemies much faster. Air Shooter is mainly made for taking out enemies in the air, so it's essentially a spread shot, dealing 2 damage with 3 separate hits. As shown are enemies with different health values placed in the air, uh, really demonstrating that this weapon focuses on the spread shot of the Air Shooter hitting enemies in the air, while also being able to stack them for massive DPS.
Fun fact about Air Shooter, you cannot multi-stack against bosses, but you can against enemies. The original Crash Man fight is only three hits. In Mega Man Maker, it's seven if primary. This weapon's ass. Mega Man 2 Quick Boomerang, originally given to you by Quick Man, does the same damage as Mega Buster, but you can auto-fire it, and it shoots at a little arc. Because of the auto-fire ability, you can just hold the shoot button and plow through enemies with ease. Notice these enemies all have shields, but depending on your position, spacing, and angle, you can just shoot Quick Boomerang right over their head, right behind their shield. Or you can just double mash, which is mashing on controller and keyboard and taking out any enemy, whether it's 5, 10, or 20 hits. And this weapon has some pretty good angles in which it can shoot above you, or you can just stand on the ground and shoot stuff underneath you below the floor. Situational, but comes in handy. And even with bosses, you can take advantage of the shield and shoot directly behind them while they're shielded, totally negating the effect of their shield and allowing an easy fight. Oh, and also, this weapon has 224 weapon ammo, so good luck using all of it. Leaf Shield from Mega Man 2, originally given to you by Woodman, is a shield that shoots up, down, left, and right for 3 damage. Leaf Shield's damage actually ticks for 3 damage at a time while you stand in front of an enemy, or you can just throw it. Leaf Shield's projectile actually stays in the frontmost layer across all these enemies, so you can just shred right through them. Also, Leaf Shield does not consume any weapon energy until you fire it. This weapon is such a powerhouse in terms of just clearing out enemies. Just look at how efficiently it wipes out all these mini bosses, and it even kills hot doggers in one hit. Leaf Shield is also pretty good against bosses. Uh, as shown here, you can just nullify all of Metal Man's projectiles and then shoot him with your own. Or you can even kill bosses by just simply standing still and letting the boss just kill themselves. Look, Ma, no hands! Mega Man 2 Crash Bomber, originally given to you by Crash Man, explodes for 14 damage. This is a slow motion big eye. We're going to kill him with two crash bombs, doing 14 damage the first bomb, and then doing six damage the second, all in intervals of two. So one crash bomb ticks seven times for two damage each. It's absolutely nuts. This weapon absolutely destroys every single enemy in Mega Man Maker. It doesn't matter how much health it has, as long as you can get inside the enemy or stand next to it or shoot it, uh, you'll just simply destroy it. So find your way in and do damage. The amount of objects this breaks requires another video. You can break four weapon blocks instead of two with the pixel perfect setup. Also, there's a frame perfect trick in which you can shoot Crash Bomber against a wall while entering a boss room and get the first frame available on damage. Boom! Mega Man 2 Time Stopper can freeze enemies and objects. Originally given to you by Flashman in Mega Man 2, Time Stopper allows you to freeze enemies in place, allowing for some easy platforming and you can just kind of ignore them. You do no damage to these enemies, but it still helps a lot. You can freeze Yokus, bombs, falling blocks, chandeliers, conveyors, fire beams, electric beams, lasers, vertical platforms, horizontal platforms, magnets, falling blocks, fans, springs, flippers, balloons, up-down elevators, and more. Time Stopper does deal damage to bosses. You actually have 420 weapon energy. You deal 13 damage over the course of 7 seconds if the primary weakness. If there's a secondary weakness, you do no damage, but the boss does still stay frozen in time. And if there is no weakness, well, good luck, you're gonna get wrecked. Metal Blade, originally given to you by Metal Man and Mega Man 2, can shoot in 8 directions. Metal Blade only consumes one weapon energy every four shots. Metal Blade is pretty good for almost all general enemies in the game, as Metal Blades pass through enemies once they're killed. Uh, it also just does one damage like Mega Buster, but some enemies have a special property, they die faster. Because of its utility and ability to go in any direction, which again, eight different directions is a lot, you can just simply kill anything from anywhere at any time. Again, only one damage, but you can shoot right above your head. You can get anticipation shots from angles, uh, down angles even. Uh, it just completely wipes out everything. It's really good. Oh, and you can only have three on the screen, just like Mega Buster. 
You're not supposed to be able to walk and shoot Metal Blade at the same time, but if you cancel your Mega Buster, you can, and it's nuts. Oh, you can do this, too. Mega Man 2 is Atomic Fire, originally given to you by Heat Man, can be shot like a buster, can melt objects, and destroy enemies. It can shoot for 2 damage at a time. It can be charged in a mid-charge for 4 damage at a time. And you can also get a full charge for 8 damage at a time, and just completely destroy enemies. In my opinion, the best way to use Atomic Fire is to just keep it fully charged and plow down enemies. Also, when you run out of weapon energy, you can still keep using it. Fun fact, you cannot shoot Woodman with Atomic Fire. However, if you turn around into him, you can. Just like most other fire abilities in Mega Man Maker, there are plenty of interactions that you can do with Atomic Fire. You can melt away ice, you can break ice, it destroys objects, you can ignite oil, and you can even cook up some crab! I mean, activate hot plates, but cook up some crab! Mega Man 3 Spark Shot, originally given to you by Sparkman, fires a projectile that also does damage over time. Shown here is the Mega Buster taking out a 1 health enemy, a 3 health enemy, and an 8 health enemy. If you were to use Spark Shot to take out these exact same 3 enemies, you would have to actually wait for 3 ticks of damage, 7 ticks of damage, and 18 ticks of damage. Each individual tick of damage does less than half of one Buster Shot. This weapon is terrible. And just so the math checks out, Big Eyes normally die in 20 Buster Shots, but here's a fast forwarded Big Eye that dies in 45 hits. Even though it's not the best damage weapon in the game, Spark Shot's pretty good for utility and electrocuting objects and pulling crates. Spark Shot can also help you see in the darkness. When you shoot it, it illuminates a little path in front of you. But guess what? This weapon is still shockingly bad. Mega Man 3 Search Snake, originally given to you by Snake Man. When fired, it shoots a snake-like projectile that hovers the floor, can also cling to the walls, and does not cling to the ceiling. Sometimes Slippery Search Snake scales stairs slowly. Sometimes Slippery Search Snake scales stairs slowly. Search Snake isn't the worst weapon against enemies, but it's also not the best. It does fire the same as Mega Buster, and you can have three on screen at once, but you really have to get anticipation shots and kind of mash this weapon ahead of the enemies for full use. Search Snake can also help you see in the dark. As shown here, you can just shoot it, it'll scale the floors, and it will just show you where you're going. This really helps for pits and spike traps. There are some fancy interactions with Surf Snake involving puzzles and on-off switches, but the real best use of this weapon is chasing the weapon itself. You actually chase the snake as you shoot it, and it's really fun. Mega Man 3 Needle Cannon, originally given to you by Needle Man. Shown here is the Mega Buster taking out a 1 health enemy, a 3 health enemy, and an 8 health enemy. Now Needle Cannon is probably one of the worst weapons in the game, it only does half a point of damage, and you're gonna see here that it takes a long time for the needle to actually proc as damage over time and kill these enemies. However, it does one-shot Needle Cannons. Needle Cannon is a very straightforward weapon. It mainly just fires a projectile and you can wave it up and down by jumping. But there's a special interaction in which you can shoot it off an enemy and it drops through a floor. Here's Needle Cannon, shown at times 2 speed with the button held in, so I'm just walking and auto-firing. And notice, even if the weapon was like this in the current game, it takes way too long to kill it. Overall, I would say Needle Cannon is not a great damage weapon, but it has really cool gimmicks like this that you can shoot boss projectiles into the floors or walls. Pretty cool concept. Mega Man 3 Top Spin, originally given to you by Top Man, lets Mega Man spin for 2 damage, and is one of the better Mega Man 3 weapons. Top Spin is one of the more unique weapons in Mega Man Maker, as it's way different than originally in Mega Man 3. In this game, you can Top Spin for 2 damage and spin on enemies. Super OP. There's a variety of enemies in Mega Man Maker, and most of them you can just kind of Top Spin on, hold right, and just spin to win, and it feels really good. Top Spin also works pretty well with objects and interactions such as buttons, on-off switches, and you can even ride up plant platforms. It's really fun. One of the most satisfying things to do in the game is kill bosses with Top Spin. 
you can just kill Charge Man by juking, winning a bunch of 50-50s here, which is quite challenging and fun. Or if you know the boss pattern well enough, you can kind of cheese some bosses and just simply spin to win. Spin to win. Mega Man 3 Shadow Blade, originally given to you by Shadow Man, has one of the best sound effects in the game. Shadow Blade can shoot in every direction like Metal Blade except down, down left, and down right. Shadow Blade only uses weapon energy once you fire it two times. Every Shadow Blade does two damage each, and you can just kind of spam it in enemy's face and they go down really quick. This weapon really shines when there's enemies in the air. You can do a neutral shot directly above your head or get some nice angle shots. You can also use diagonal shots against jumping enemies. Against objects, Shadow Blade is also pretty good, as it fires diagonally and right above your head, so most objects can just kind of be sniped from a distance. It feels really good to snipe things at maximum range. Shadow Blade really comes in handy against annoying enemies that hang out in the air, like Spring Man, Shade Man, Astro Man, and Sheet Man. It speeds up the fight, and if you miss a shot, you might still hit anyway. Ninja Star. Mega Man 3 Magnet Missile, originally given to you by Magnet Man, fires a magnet-shaped homing projectile for 2 damage. Magnet Missile has 28 weapon energy. Every time you shoot a Magnet Missile, you use 2 weapon energy, so you essentially have 14 hits, which is just enough to take care of most enemies in the game. Whenever there's enemies on screen, Magnet Missile will always home into the first available enemy, so it's really good at shooting in the air. The Lazy Man's Weapon. Magnet Missile is one of the best Mega Man 3 weapons simply because of its convenience and DPS. You can just spam the weapon and it will automatically home in to the first available target and just wipes them out. There are also tons of kinda cute interactions you can do with hitting buttons and switches and forcing some pretty cool setups with Magnet Missile. And more importantly, you can force overhead since you can't normally shoot horizontally. This Magfly actually lets us shoot the blocks above our head. Great weapon. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 3 Gemini Laser, originally given to you by Gemini Man, fires a laser projectile that bounces around the room and deals 6 damage. It's made up of 4 separate pieces of durability dealing 1.5 damage each, and it can obliterate everything in its path. Gemini Laser destroys things in sets of 4, as it eats up 4 durability at a time, and also it will bounce around the room 12 times before disappearing. You can also spam this weapon in the corner and get some really good angle shots. Gemini Laser deals 6 damage and passes through enemies on kill. By far most damaging Mega Man 3 weapon. This weapon destroys everything in the game. Watch how we just do 76 damage in 5 seconds. Literally. That's a lot of damage. This weapon is so busted, it actually shoots out of bounds, clips through the wall, and fires little tiny petite Gemini Lasers that do just as much damage as the big ones. It's crazy. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 3 Hard Knuckle, originally given to you by Hard Man, fires a big blue fist for 3 damage. You can also angle this weapon up in the air and down in the air. Hard Knuckle is a great damage weapon, but man is it slow. It has a 14 frame startup. Hard Knuckle's projectile does 3 damage, and the durability on this thing is absolutely nuts. We use 1 fist and kill all of these enemies and only use 2 weapon energy. But you do have 14 hits total. Hard Knuckle has an interaction where you can actually juggle it off of enemies and hit objects with it. It's one of the hardest weapons in the game as you have to split your brain in half, control the fist with one half of your brain, and Mega Man with the other. It is very hard, man. It's easy to overlook, but you can actually use Hard Knuckle to stall and dodge bullets. Shoot right before you get hit and dodge. Also, with fast cancels, you can stall in the air for a really long time, but it's hard. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 4 Ring Boomerang, originally given to you by Ring Man. Ring Boomerang deals 2 damage one shot, one stop, and once it returns, totaling 6 damage. You can also pick up health and ammo drops. And depending on your spacing, you can stack damage and either deal 6 damage at a time or 4 damage at a time. And of course, Ring Boomerang is exactly a boomerang. Once you shoot it, it's going to go right back to the player, so if you jump or slide or no matter how you move, it's always going to come right back to you. And any enemy that's in the path of this boomerang will get decimated. Again, it does up to 6 damage depending on spacing. Overall, this weapon is pretty solid. 
Mega Buster cannot kill a Gary Obi, however, Ring Boomerang is one of the weapons that can deal with Gary Obi's and other unique enemies. This weapon is nuts. You can also grab juice and run with it and just keep it on screen the whole time and use it when you need to. You can also push and pull items and walk it like a dog. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 4 Dive Missile, originally given to you by Dive Man, shoots a missile-shaped projectile with homing properties. Dive Missile is a singular projectile that homes in on the nearest enemy. Whether it's all the way up in the air or all the way on the floor, it's just going to target it, track it down, and deal three damage to it. It's really good. Also, if there's a target on the ceiling, it will home all the way to the top in a circular form and just keep hitting stuff until it reaches the target. This is the ultimate convenience weapon. Dive Missile has 28 weapon capacity and does 3 damage to the target, which is basically a charge shot. Except you never have to charge it. Being the ultimate lazy man's weapon, you can just close your eyes, spam this weapon, and it will kill everything in front of you. Because again, 3 damage is a ton, and it can also save your life a lot of the time. This weapon hits even when you don't think it can. Oh, and... Subscribe for more. Mega Man 4 Skull Barrier, originally given to you by Skull Man, creates a shield of skulls. Does three damage each and you get 14 shots. Although Skull Barrier tinks on some enemies, it does destroy most enemies pretty fast. Skull Barrier's most unique property is that it allows Mega Man to stay on spikes. You can actually walk on spikes, slide on spikes, and interact with spikes as long as Skull Barrier is equipped. But be careful, if you touch a weapon block or an enemy, you'll die. This weapon is really good at dealing with a bunch of crap on screen. You can just match the weapon and it will deal with all the stuff on screen. Really comes in handy in a pinch. Skull Barrier is also really good against bosses as it negates all of their projectiles and you can just kind of walk up to them and just match the weapon and get the job done. This tactic works really well against Metal Man, Crystal Man, Night Man, and other bosses that are dumb. Good weapon! Subscribe for more. Mega Man 4 Flash Stopper, originally given to you by Bright Man. Flash Stopper is a full screen freeze effect that freezes all objects and enemies in place. Once active, you can shoot your buster for one damage. Flash Stopper is really good against enemies because you can freeze them in place and manipulate their position and move around them with ease. Just notice how easy it is to manipulate these enemies and shoot them. Flash Stopper is really good at helping you gain control of a situation. This weapon is so good, it freezes Yoku's, bombs, lasers, topspin platforms, falling blocks, fans, jet platforms, concrete platforms, balls, conveyors, crash lifts, astro gates, sponge blocks, and more. Flash Stopper is also very good against bosses because you can just freeze them in place and either mash them down or calculate it and strategically jump over their position and maneuver them with ease. You can even freeze through shields. Great weapon. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 4 Dust Crusher, originally given to you by Dust Man, shoots a dust-shaped projectile with spread shot. Dust Crusher actually spreads into four separate shots on impact. Once the weapon hits something, it spreads into four separate shots, shooting in four separate areas, dealing two damage each. Dust Crusher is an absolute powerhouse of a weapon. Just watch it obliterate all these enemies in just one hit, and he can even kill Gabials. Dust Crusher stacks damage on impact and is completely nuts. Even against some objects, you can force a spread shot on Dust Crusher and manipulate its position. You can also just kind of shoot objects that do one damage and just break it and do not do any spread shots. You can make this weapon really fancy. Alright, now the best part of Dust Crusher is obviously the DPS. We're gonna kill four 20 health enemies in two hits each. Just watch this destruction. This is dirty as dust. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 4 Drill Bomb, originally given to you by Drill Man, shoots a drill-shaped projectile that explodes. Drill Bomb only fires in a straight line, and you can only have one on the screen at a time. However, you can self-detonate it and choose when it explodes. It's very handy. Drill Bomb does six damage at a time, which in terms of Mega Man damage is a lot. That is two charge shots worth of damage, and you can literally just mash it. You have 28 of them, and you can obliterate everything in the game. And it also kills Gabby. In 
terms of items and object interactions, the only thing this really does is self-detonate, so you can control the blast radius splash damage effect and use it. Drill Bomb really shines as one of the best damage weapons in all of Mega Man Maker. As again said before, you can destroy everything in the game, just look how fast everything dies. This weapon is incredible! Subscribe for more. Mega Man 4 Rain Flush, originally given to you by Toad Man. Fires full screen and covers everything. Rain Flush is a full screen wipe that deals 5 damage over 2 seconds, and you get 7 uses of it. This can wipe out everything in the game, but bigger enemies take longer to kill. Shown here are enemies with different health values up to 5 health, and they all die with one shot. This weapon flushes away all your problems. Same thing applies with objects, as long as it has less than 5 durability, you can break through it with ease. Rain Flush is good for dealing with multiple varieties of fire and can put them out, and also allows you to go against the heaviest of rains and jump in them. My personal favorite use of Rain Flush is mobility. You can do some really big, fast, fun jumps with this weapon, and it even stacks in the rain and makes for some fast, good gameplay. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 4 Pharaoh Shot, originally given to you by Pharaoh Man, creates a giant solar flare sun-shaped circle. Pharaoh Shot has many different directions. It can shoot up left, up right, down left, down right, left and right, but cannot shoot up and down. And it can also be charged. Pharaoh Shot does the same amount of damage as Mega Buster, which is 1 damage, unless you charge it, which does 4 damage. Really good weapon once charged. There's also special interactions that one-shot whoppers. Pharaoh Shot is also really good at dealing with objects and interactions. This weapon is crazy versatile, allows you to illuminate the dark, and you can charge it and shoot the charge shot in angles, and it destroys dust blocks and other objects. Also really good if you just charge the weapon and walk forward with it with this big sun on your head and you just destroy stuff in your path. Really good. The most unique thing about Pharaoh Shot is you can charge it while sliding and kill stuff above you. That's pretty cool. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 5 Power Stone, originally given to you by Stone Man, shoots three stones counterclockwise for three damage each, lasts two and a half seconds. Power Stone is an area of effect attack that spins stones around Mega Man, doing three damage each. It goes through enemies as long as it kills them, and it will continue to spin around the screen. Shown here is a 20 health big eye dying in 7 hits, 3 damage each, or you can stand inside it and kill it in 4 hits, 6 damage each. In Mega Man Maker, Power Stone is way better than an original Mega Man 5, as it was kind of a laggy mess. Here you can just spam it and just destroy everything on screen, totally overpowered stone. I mean just watch it destroy this entire screen of enemies, super OP. The most fun thing you can do with Power Stone is fast cancel the crap out of it, walk forward, just smash through enemies, and obliterate everything. It feels really good. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 5 Gravity Hold, originally given to you by Gravity Man. Just like Rain Flush in Mega Man 4, Gravity Hold is a full screen wipe damaging everything on screen. It also makes an annoying flash. Gravity Hole deals 4 damage to the entire screen, and you have 7 uses of it, so you can effectively kill every enemy in the game as long as it has under 28 health. This is extremely handy for dealing with a lot of enemy spam, which Mega Man Maker is known for. Gravity Hold is so good, you don't have to think, aim, try, or do anything, just press the button and stuff will get deleted off screen. It doesn't matter if there's 1 enemy, 20 enemies, red enemies, blue enemies, they're all gonna die and it feels really good. Probably the most unique thing that you can do with Gravity Hold is manipulate gravity fields and waterfalls. So take a look out for this in levels, it's a lot of fun. Maybe one day we'll get reverse gravity. <clears throat> Subscribe for more. Mega Man 5 Napalm Bomb, originally given to you by Napalm Man, shoots a peanut or potato shaped projectile for 3 damage. Napalm Bomb fires and lobs in a little shot and just kind of dribbles to the ground, so it's just going to fall and bounce against a wall until it explodes. You can manipulate the bomb by standing against a wall when you fire it. Napalm Bomb does 3 damage, but you can only have 3 bombs on screen at one time, so essentially you're going to have to just walk up to stuff at close range and mash it to really get full use out of it. A 
free damage weapon is really good in Mega Man Maker, but Napalm Bomb is still the worst bomb weapon in the game. In terms of objects, Napalm Bomb can really only roll across the floor and then explode after 3 seconds. You can shoot it against the wall if you need specific angles, and this allows for some fancy yet puzzly setups. You can also lift and push light boxes with it, along with break most breakable objects in Mega Man Maker. Subscribe for more! Mega Man 5 Gyro Attack, originally given to you by Gyro Man, shoots a propeller-shaped projectile that can be directed up or down, but only once. Once aimed up or down, it cannot be moved again. Gyro Attack is a self-controlled projectile, which makes it one of the most unique in the game. Because of your ability to control it, it's one of the hardest weapons to master. Gyro Attack deals 2 damage, and you can only have 1 on the screen at a time, but it does have great durability as it passes through enemies on kill. For best damage, stay up close. I would say the best use of this weapon is by fast cancelling. You can aim up and down and just kind of shred enemies in your path as long as you have good aim. Also, if enemies are weak enough, you can just fall with this weapon and it will destroy everything with you. Because of its natural utility to go up and down, you can force players to shoot objects and buttons and such to allow for progression and makes for some interesting levels. Subscribe for more! Mega Man 5 Crystal Eye, originally given to you by Crystal Man, shoots an orb-shaped projectile that splits into three smaller orbs on impact. Crystal Eye splits on impact, and this can be forced by the player if you mash it against the wall, and it basically covers most of the screen as shown here. You can hit full screen if you jump and mash, and you can also funnel this weapon into little cubbies. With 28 weapon energy, you can destroy everything. When fired, Crystal Eye does 3 damage, however it does break on impact, and the 3 little orbs also deal 3 damage each, so this is a 12 damage in one weapon. Watch this 20 health big eye die in 2 hits. Against enemies, Crystal Eye is best when you just shoot the weapon against the wall and run with the little orbies. And the best part of Crystal Eye is stacking damage. You can kill bosses in 3 hits. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 5 Star Crash, originally given to you by Starman, creates a shield of stars with a low gravity effect. Star Crash allows Mega Man to jump 11 tiles high and also doesn't deplete weapon energy until it uses durability. Mega Man can equip Star Crash and walk with it and also throw it for 3 damage and you can just kind of obliterate enemies in your path with it. This weapon is really good for dealing with enemy spam. You can just put on the shield, walk towards enemies, and it feels really good. Also, Star Crash can be used 14 times. Star Crash does not stack with water, which means you get normal jumps when you have it equipped. Pink Bounce Balls go 18 tiles. Springs go 21 tiles. Striped Bounce Balls go 28 tiles. Aside from jumping, Star Crash helps accelerate Mega Man's horizontal speed so you can reach ledges with it. Also makes for some of the best movement in the game! Subscribe for more! Mega Man 5 Water Wave, originally given to you by Wave Man, shoots a cluster of waves for 3 damage. When fired underwater, this weapon turns into a shotgun for 6 damage. Literally double damage. Water Wave works as water should, as it occupies the first available space. Water Wave is extremely overpowered underwater, as it deals 6 damage. In this form, it's one of the best weapons in the game. So it's outside water, 3 damage, 7 times, or it's inside water, 6 damage, 4 times. Water Wave is good for low health enemies outside of water, but it deals with everything inside of water and acts like a shotgun. You have 28 weapon energy, dealing 6 damage each. What are they thinking? Just like all the other water weapons, Water Wave can put out fire and even deal with chemical reactions. This weapon is extremely underrated. Subscribe for more! Mega Man 5 Charge Kick, originally given to you by Charge Man. Charge Kick lets Mega Man slide for 4 tiles with invincibility frames for 2 damage and you can jump out of it. Charge Kick only deals 2 damage so not much to say here, however it is one of the best mobility weapons in the whole game. Charge Kick is an absolute powerhouse against enemies, you can literally spam through them, you will not take any damage, and you go mock chicken speed. 
Invincibility frames are broken. Sea Kick is so good you can break other weapon blocks for free, and it also goes through lasers which should one hit kill you. Sea Kick is very good against bosses as well, as you can just dodge right through their projectiles, take no damage, and in certain cases you can double stack your damage. Some bosses don't even jump unless you press shoot, and Charge Kick is a slide. So basically the boss just walks around and you win, or does nothing like Toad. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 6 Blizzard Attack, originally given to you by Blizzard Man, shoots a flurry of four snowflakes for two damage each. Blizzard Attack is a spread shot that deals two damage one o'clock, four damage three o'clock, and two damage five o'clock. Blizzard Attack essentially hits for eight damage in four separate pieces of two damage each. You can focus just two damage on an enemy if you abuse the angle, so we're gonna kill this 20 health big eye in 10 two damage hits, or with our ass for 24 damage. Against enemies, Blizzard Attack is pretty awkward as it shoots in weird angles and takes forever to start up, but you can kill enemies by turning around, killing it with your ass, and doing maximum damage. This feels good to do. Also against weaker enemies, you can abuse the angles and get some good snipes. And of course since it's an ice weapon, you can stop fire and put out firewalls. But I still say the most unique thing about this weapon is how it's used. You really want to use it with your ass. This does make the weapon kinda hard and pretty complex. Pretty cool weapon. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 6 Windstorm, originally given to you by Windman. Windstorm is a wind-shaped projectile that can be shot for two damage, and you can have three on the screen at once, and they bounce off of walls. Windstorm does deal two damage, however, when you kill an enemy with it, it doesn't drop any health. It just gets taken to the ceiling and just blows away. You can essentially spam Windstorm and blow away all your problems. But it does require knowledge with setups and wall shots. And now for the best part of this weapon is the movement. You can scale walls vertically really crazy and really fast. You have 28 weapon energy to do so. It even goes faster underwater. And it works on spikes so you can just hop over all your problems. Windstorm is so good, you can stack big boy damage with it. You get very precise wall shots, stack your damage, and it also works in cubbies and just deletes enemies. Incredible weapon. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 6 Flame Blast, originally given to you by Flame Man, shoots a flame pillar for three damage. In terms of angles and directions, Flame Blast is pretty straightforward. It shoots in a little bit of an arc, it can stick to walls and floors, and you get 28 hits. Flame Blast deals 3 damage, which is the equivalent of a fully charged buster shot, and you have 28 hits of it, so you can melt through every enemy in your path. Easily the best part of this weapon is the damage. It's pretty good. The durability on Flame Blast is pretty good too. As long as you kill an enemy with 3 or less health, Flame Blast will continue to pass through other enemies and just allow you to kill them. Shown here is Flame Blast being stuck on a wall and killing an enemy underwater. Like most fire weapons in Mega Man Maker, Flame Blast can ignite oil and melt ice. And it can even help Mega Man find his way and navigate through a dark path. Pretty versatile weapon. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 6 Silver Tomahawk, originally given to you by Tomahawk Man. Silver Tomahawk shoots at an angle and has a nice little curve when you shoot it. This is mainly just a damage weapon. It does deal 2 damage, but you can take advantage of this arc and get some really good snipes in. It also hits under your feet. You wouldn't think 2 damage is a lot, but when you have 28 hits of it and you can spam it in enemies' faces, you can just delete everything on screen really fast. Because of its angles and its range, Silver Tomahawk can delete almost all enemies whether they're up in the air or low on the ground. Also, very similar to Flame Blast, another Mega Man 6 weapon, this has very good durability and if it kills an enemy, it will continue to pass through it and kill even more. This weapon can be satisfying. As Silver Tomahawk is mainly a DPS weapon, you can still take advantage of its angles and hit switches and gimmicks and stuff, but the coolest thing about this weapon is you can overflow your inventory by accident. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 6 Night Crusher, originally given to you by Nightman, shoots a mace-shaped projectile. No matter which way you shoot this weapon, the mace will always come back in a counterclockwise rotation. Just like a windmill. Shown here is roughly what the pattern of Night Crusher is. Night Crusher deals 3 damage, which is the equivalent of a charge shot. You can kill a 5 health enemy in 2 hits, a 16 health enemy in 6 hits, and 20 health enemies in 7 hits. 
against enemies, Night Crusher is pretty good as you can take advantage of its angles. You can just hold a direction and spam the weapon and destroy everything in your path. Also, the mace projectile itself is a little smaller than one tile, but notice here how it clears out all of these enemies. It has a very wide hitbox. Against objects, Night Crusher is pretty straightforward. You can hit stuff from a distance, you can hit stuff with your angles, and you can break stuff. Decent weapon. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 6 Yamato Spear. Originally given to you by Yamato Man, shoots a spearhead shaped projectile for 2 damage. This weapon does not shoot straight, it only shoots at an up angle and a down angle. Notice this red target doesn't break. As mentioned, Yamato Spear does not shoot straight. It either shoots at a low angle or a high angle. It's very hard to snipe enemies because of this. Although once you do master its angles, it is satisfying to get off shots. Yamato Spear only deals 2 damage, you have 28 weapon energy, and on kill it passes through enemies. The closer you are, the easier it is to hit stuff. Along with many other Mega Man 6 weapons, on kill this passes through enemies and you can abuse it. Potato Potato Yamato Yamato! Personally, I think the best use of this weapon is when you go really fast and you escort the bullets. Subscribe for more! Mega Man 6 Plant Barrier, originally given to you by Plant Man, creates a shield of flower petals that deals 3 damage on impact and turns enemy projectiles into healing orbs. Plant Barrier does 3 damage and you have 14 weapon energy. You can shred almost everything in the game with this, but you'll run out quick. It's one of the best shields in the game. Plant Barrier destroys all the enemies in the game, just put it on and do some walking and get some lucky drops to keep it active. It also kills high health enemies very fast. The best part about Plant Barrier is its ability to heal the player. You can absorb enemy projectiles and create orbs that heal for 2 damage each. Just like most shields in Mega Man Maker, you can use shields to negate enemy projectiles as you kill them. But be careful, if you're healing with this weapon and dealing damage with it, you will run out very fast. Also, you can put on Plant Barrier just like other shields and negate Nightman's mace and he'll just stand there like a dummy for a while. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 6 Centaur Flash, originally given to you by Centaur Man, flashes with invincibility for 2 seconds, dealing 8 damage. Centaur Flash is arguably the best weapon in Mega Man Maker. It deals 8 damage, and it gives you invincibility frames for 2 seconds. You can walk through the game. Pretty broken weapon. Centaur Flash is so strong, it stops fans from blowing, conveyors from moving, chains from falling, elevators from lifting, and platforms from dropping. It's nuts. Its only real downside is you only have 7 shots. Honestly, the best part of Centaur Flash is just the movement. You can walk through everything in the game, enemies, objects, one-hit KOs. It just feels really good to deny death, walk on spikes, and get away with almost everything in the game. Nothing can stop Mega Man once he uses Centaur Flash. This weapon feels really good to use. Also, with Centaur Flash, bosses have a smaller invincibility window. Super fast, super flashy. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 7 Wild Coil, originally given to you by Springman, shoots a spring on both sides of Mega Man for 2 damage each. Wild Coil is one of the only weapons that you can charge. You can charge low for as low as 1 tile, or you can charge high and they go as 5 tiles high and continue to bounce. You can also charge spam it and walk with springs. It charges much faster than Mega Buster. Without charging, Wild Coil does 2 damage per hit, but when you charge it, it does 4 damage each, so you essentially double the damage when you charge it. This weapon is better when charged. Just like Metal Blade and other weapons in Mega Man Maker, you cannot walk and shoot this weapon at the same time, so it makes it a little bit awkward. Plus, you always have to charge it for maximum damage, so it can be tough. You can make some pretty unique setups with Wild Coil by forcing a low shot or a high shot. It also does scale underwater so you can make fancy stuff with that, but it doesn't pop dust blocks and objects until you're really close to it. Kinda awkward but fun weapon. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 7 Noise Crush, originally given to you by Shade Man. Noise Crush shoots a straight sound wave shaped projectile that can bounce off walls and even be charged for double damage. It can also go through walls whether it's charged or not. A non-charged shot will pass after 7 hits. A non-charged Noise Crush deals 2 damage, so it takes a while to kill high health enemies. However, if you charge it, it deals double damage, which is 4 damage, so it gets the job done half as fast. 
Noise Crush really isn't the best weapon against enemies because you're too busy focusing on when you have to charge it and you're more worried about your spacing and timing than actually damage on the weapon. But against smaller health enemies, it does shred through them and it's really fun to get some good charge shots off. The more practiced you are, the more fun it is. You can use charge shots on specific angles to obliterate objects in your path and take advantage of the fact that once it's charged, it does go through walls. Unique weapon. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 7 Danger Wrap, originally given to you by Burst Man, shoots a bubble that can encapsulate enemies or be dropped like a mine. Danger Wrap floats up as it shoots, but you can also hold up and get a tighter angle on it so it shoots more above Mega Man's head. You can also drop these on the ground and they blow up like mines over time. Capturing enemies in a bubble is one of the best things to do with this weapon, and you can capture all different sizes, what so seems to be up to 1, 2, 3, and even 4 tile size enemies. But once the enemies start getting too big, you just do damage to them and you can't capture them. They last a while in this bubble, and you can push them around to take advantage of it. It's a lot of fun to do. Danger App normally deals 3 damage, but encapsulated enemies deal 6 damage, which is double. You mainly want to walk up to enemies and spam this weapon in their face, and you have 28 hits to do so. The coolest thing you can do with this weapon is stack damage. Just place three mines on the ground at the same time and bosses will eat up all that damage. So it's three hits for one. Boom, baby! Subscribe for more. Mega Man 7 Freeze Cracker, originally given to you by Freeze Man, shoots a snowflake that freezes enemies and can explode. Freeze Cracker only explodes hitting the wall, ceiling, or floor. Freeze Cracker can be shot straight, down, and up, each resulting in different angles on impact. You can basically hit anything from anywhere. Freeze Cracker actually deals 1.5 damage, which makes the breakpoints pretty awkward. You kill 2 health enemies in 2 hits, 4 health enemies in 3 hits, 13 health enemies in 9 hits, and 16 health enemies in 11 hits. This weapon kind of compares to Ice Slasher, which has no damage, and it's better to just kind of freeze enemies in place and manipulate their position and move around them. You do have 28 hits, but the damage is too weak. And of course, because Freeze Cracker is an ice weapon, you can freeze objects with it, including fire pillars, lava, and firewalls. Even these drills. All around pretty cool weapon. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 8 Mega Ball, originally given to you by Rush in the opening of Mega Man 8, creates a ball that can be kicked and explodes. Mega Ball can be kicked in two directions. You can hold up while kicking for a more obtuse shot, or you can hold nothing when you shoot it for a more acute shot. You can also drop a ball and walk with it. When shot, Mega Ball does two damage, but when kicked, it does four damage. But this is very awkward against enemies and takes forever to kill them. The best thing about Mega Ball is hands down the movement. You can do some really cool things with this weapon. With enough control, you can hover infinitely horizontally as long as you have weapon energy. You can also use Mega Ball to just spam it on the ceiling and just hover the ceiling as well. Also, the same thing works when you're on the ground trying to get to a high place. Just kind of spam it against the wall and you will scale vertically. Really fun. Also, when you run out of weapon energy, you can just kind of kick stuff. It does no damage, but you can kick stuff. You can even kick health. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 8 Tornado Hold, originally given to you by Tango Man, shoots a big tornado that shoots vertically. Tornado Hold is a little fan that lob shots. Once it hits the floor, it shoots a big vertical tornado. You can use this to get really high. Tornado Hold is a damage over time effect, which means the enemy stands in it and takes one damage over the course of almost three seconds. Tornado Hold is also awkward because when you shoot it, you can't move with it. You have to wait for the enemies to die. Even though Tornado Hold can deal 10 damage in one shot, the best way to use this weapon is the mobility. You can do some really cool stuff with this weapon in terms of movement. You can even move with Tornado Hold and chase it in the air. It's super fun. Against objects, you can lift boxes, open platforms, break and move objects, and even put out fire. This weapon also makes bosses a joke. You can just shoot the weapon and stay in the corner of the room and let the bosses kill themselves. It's absolutely insane. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 8 Flash Bomb, originally given to you by Grenade Man. Flash Bomb is a grenade-shaped projectile that shoots straight out of Mega Man's buster. Once it makes impact, it explodes over time. Flash Bomb actually ticks for 1 damage over the course of 2.5 seconds, and it does not scale, which means when you shoot two of them at the same time, it does not double damage. You can kill a big eye with the same amount of hits with one shot or two shots. 
I would say Flash Bomb is the perfect example of an average weapon. You have a good amount of weapon energy, it does a decent amount of DPS, and it has a little bit of versatility. It's pretty average. Probably the best thing you can do is take advantage of the damage over time and stick it against a wall and cover your butt. Perfectly placed shots with this weapon feel really good. Against objects, Flash Bomb destroys on impact, and some objects take longer to break than others. And it can also light up rooms pretty well, but I forgot to show that off. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 8 Thunderclaw, originally given to you by Clown Man, shoots lightning that extends and retracts out of Mega Man's Buster. Thunderclaw shoots straight out of Mega Man's Buster, but you can jump up and down with it active. Thunderclaw shoots 8 tiles in length for 3 damage, and you have 28 hits of it. Thunderclaw is pretty good against enemies because you have a lot of weapon energy, it does the same damage as a charge shot, and it has insane range. Thunderclaw interacts with more objects than your average weapon. It goes through walls, destroys blocks, and most importantly, can activate electrical items. You can use this with magnetic coils and get a nice speed boost. It's one of the best parts of the game. And of course, you can't talk about Thunderclaw without the grappling hook. You can actually swing like Tarzan with these. Just shoot Thunderclaw at the grapple hook and it will auto-swing Mega Man. And along with grapple hook swings, you can also do reverse grapple hook swings. Just turn around and shoot the grapple hook right after you pass it and you can extend 5 tile gaps. It even stops fire met spawners. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 8 Flame Sword, originally given to you by Swordman, swings a fiery sword that can deal up to 5 damage depending on the spacing and duration. Fire Sword only extends a few tiles, so you have to be up close and personal when attacking with it. One of the better melee weapons in Mega Maker. Shown here is a 20 health big eye dying in 20 1 damage hits and also 7 3 damage hits. Spacing matters. Against enemies, melee weapons aren't the best in Mega Man Maker because it requires you to be standing right next to the enemy on use. Plus the flame sword animation itself is long so it takes forever to kill stuff. So not the best against enemies, however when you have this weapon with base it becomes a lot better. You have bigger swing arcs because you have dash and you can move with the weapon. Because it's a fire weapon, Flame Sword interacts with tons of objects, including blizzard pillars, flammable oil, explosive blocks, and you can even light up rooms pretty well. There's even a Flame Sword Easter egg with roll that you can make heart emojis. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 9 Concrete Shot, originally given to you by Concrete Man. Concrete Shot deals 3 damage and you get 14 shots. Concrete Shot's pretty good against enemies because it deals 3 damage, however when you kill an enemy it turns into concrete which means you can't get any of its drops. Concrete Shot is easily one of the best weapons in the game. You can essentially shut off fans by shooting concrete on top of it and then walking. You can also walk on spikes with it and other hazards like fire. You can also build stairs with it. Movement is really fun with Concrete Shot because when you kill enemies, you platform off of them and you can do some really cool chains with it. You can even climb vertically with Concrete Shot. You can scale walls with it and you can also do zigzags with spikes. Honestly incredible weapon. Concrete Shot is so OP that you can even shoot magma pillars and climb on them. You can also kill bosses in one hit. This worked better in the past, but we don't talk about that. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 9 Jewel Satellite, originally given to you by Jewel Man, creates a shield of jewels. When used, Jewel Satellite creates four jewels that orbit around Mega Man, creating a shield. You can throw Jewel Satellite as well for two damage. Shown here is a 20 health big eye, but you can only deal 14 damage to him. Jewel Satellite's not great against big enemies, but against small enemies, it's pretty good. You can just put on Jewel Satellite and kind of walk through enemies, but be mindful of your weapon energy. It does go quick. You can throw Jewel Satellite offensively, and it shreds through most low health enemies, or you can wear it like a shield defensively and eat up a lot of the bullets on screen. It does reflect bullets back, so it can help you with a lot of bullet health situations. Jewel Satellite is insane against bosses. You can reflect all the projectiles back at them and it makes a really fast fight. You can also bully bosses in the corner and even one hit KO Metal Man. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 9 Hornet Chaser, originally given to you by Hornet Man, shoots homing hornets. Hornet Chaser is pretty unique because it tracks and homes against items and enemies. If there's nothing for the Hornet to track, then it will just kind of shoot at an angle. Hornet Chaser deals 2 damage, and anytime an enemy drops an item, the Hornet will pick it up and bring it to you. 
Hornet Chaser is the definition of the lazy man's weapon. You can just spam this weapon and the bees will do all of the work. You can only have three hornets on the screen at once, but man, they just do everything for you. They kill enemies and they even bring you all the goods afterwards. You have 28 weapon energy, but as you use the bees, you keep getting more ammo, so it just loops. As one of the most unique weapons in the game, Hornet Chaser lets you make really cool puzzles and some of my favorite levels, which are escorts. You just shoot a bee and run with it through the entire level. Unbelievably satisfying. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 9 Laser Trident. Originally given to you by Splash Woman, shoots a piercing trident that penetrates all enemies on screen. You have 56 weapon energy and it essentially doubles your buster damage. Laser Trident shoots in a straight line and you can only have two on the screen at once. You deal two damage with each trident and they pass through other enemies, so it essentially obliterates everything in your path. You wouldn't think two damage is a lot, but the fact that it pierces enemies makes this weapon very good. You can just walk and shoot this weapon at the same time and just mow down anything in your path. You have 56 shots to do so. This weapon does one thing and one thing only, and that's damage, and it does it well. Not many weapons in the game can pierce like Laser Trident. Just look at how this weapon shreds most grunt enemies in Mega Maker. Although this weapon is a one-trick pony, you can shoot magma pillars with concrete and then destroy it with laser trident. Pretty fancy. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 9 Magma Bazooka, originally given to you by Magma Man. Magma Bazooka is a spread shot that deals one damage in three separate directions. However, it can also be charged for triple damage, dealing nine damage with each shot instead of three. Magma Bazooka is really good against enemies because you just melt everything in your path. Whether it's charged or not, you can just walk up to enemies, match the weapon in their face, and just completely remove them from the game. Very powerful weapon, but I do recommend charging it when you can. The damage is absolutely nuts. Nine damage is a lot. Just look at this charge shot. Magma Bazooka is pretty good against objects. You can take advantage of the angles and hit on-off switches. You can also break ice walls and pillars, and you can also see in the dark. The best part about this weapon is the charge shot. Just watch how fast all of these bosses die. One charge shot, tons of damage, and a great sound effect. Boom. Boom. Subscribe Boom. for more. Mega Man 9 Black Hole Bomb, originally given to you by Galaxy Man. Black Hole Bomb is a vortex that sucks enemies into its center. The player can control the direction of it by guiding it on screen and determine when to activate it. It also lasts four and a half seconds. Black Hole Bomb deals four damage on hit and does not work over time. Once the enemy dies, it gets pulled into the vortex. Cancel spam for max damage. Black Hole Bomb's pretty good for dealing with enemies, except not the big health, chunky enemies that take a lot of hits. However, be mindful, you only have seven hits of it, so you can't really kill too many things, so you want to place it wisely. This weapon is great for dealing with lower health enemies. The vacuum effect is the coolest part of the weapon. The fact that it activates over time means you can do some fancy setups with it, especially with on-off switches. You can even use it to pull in giant packs of enemies and destroy them, and you can even make some really cool art. Just shoot Black Hole Bomb and jump with it. Look how cool it looks. Totally trippy, man. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 9 Tornado Blow, originally given to you by Tornado Man, fills the entire screen with tornadoes. Tornado Blow is a full screen wipe that covers the entire screen from low to high. So when you shoot this, it's going to obliterate everything on screen and send it to the ceiling. Tornado Blow deals 4 damage and you only have 4 uses of it. So when you try to kill this 20 health big guy, well you can't. Tornado Blow is very overpowered. It does all the work for you. You just press the button and enemies get lifted to the ceiling. The good news is it kills enemies really quickly, but the bad news is, is you cannot get any drops once you kill an enemy. It also lasts on screen quite a bit, so you have to cancel it if you really want to do some damage. But man, against enemies, it's so good. All right, now the best part about Tornado Blow is the movement. You can do some really big jumps with this weapon vertically and horizontally and makes the platforming super fun. The only downside is you only have four shots, but man, this weapon blows me away. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 10 Triple Blade, originally given to you by Blade Man, shoots three blades that create a spread shot effect. When standing, Triple Blade shoots three blades in an acute angle that scale outwards, creating a spread shot or fan effect. When you jump and shoot Triple Blade, that angle is flipped upside down, which means you can hit specific angles with it, including right under your feet. Triple Blade deals six damage. That's double a charge shot. 
Triple Blade is one of the best weapons in the game for dealing with enemies hands down. You have 28 weapon energy, it shreds through everything, you can do massive damage really fast, and you just deal with everything super easy. It's a very broken weapon. Just look at how it destroys all of these mini bosses like it's no big deal. This weapon is so OP. Easily one of the best DPS weapons in the game. Triple Blade's also insane against bosses. If it has no weakness, you can still kill it in probably 14 hits or less, and if it does have a weakness, it dies in three hits. One, two, bam! One, two, Subscribe bam. for more. Mega Man 10 Solar Blaze, originally given to you by Solar Man, shoots a ball of fire that explodes horizontally. On contact, it shoots waves of fire to the left and right. Solar Blaze stretches across the entire screen left and right. When you don't make any contact with the weapon, you have to wait about two seconds for it to explode itself. You can also hit directly above and below you. The waves of fire that Solar Blaze creates deals 3 damage, but the actual circular projectile itself deals 6 damage. So depending on your spacing, you can actually deal double damage as shown by this big eye. Solar Blaze is pretty good against enemies. You deal decent damage and you have a lot of weapon ammo. The only problem is when you don't make contact with it, you have to kind of sit there and wait for it to explode itself. But in general, the weapon's pretty good, especially against smaller enemies. And of course, because it's a fire weapon, you can destroy blizzard pillars and dust blocks, TNT and explosive crates, ignite flammable oil, and even light up rooms pretty well. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 10 Thunderwolf, originally given to you by Sheet Man, shoots a cloud into the air that strikes down lightning that spreads across the ground. Thunderwolf can actually be shot in three different directions. It can be shot directly above Mega Man's head while holding up, it can be shot normally, and it can be shot further away by holding forward. Once the lightning strikes the ground, it spreads for around five tiles. In total, it's around three seconds. Thunderwolf has interesting damage values. The cloud itself deals 1.5 damage, and it also deals 1.5 damage over time. Each cloud's about three seconds, and you can have two on the screen doubling damage. Even though it has decent damage, Thunderwolf's not that good against enemies. It shoots at an awkward angle, and there's tons of waiting for the weapon. The weapon is bad. I would say Thunderwolf's mainly a tech weapon. Against objects, you can use electricity to push and pull magnetic crates, you can activate magnetic coils and lasers, and it also works in the dark. Definitely one of the most unique weapons in the game. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 10 Commando Bomb, originally given to you by Commando Man. Commando Bomb is a controllable projectile that can go in any direction, up, down, left, or right, infinitely, until it collides with an object, enemy, or any tile, such as the floor, ceiling, or wall. The bomb stays on screen for as long as you want it to, so as long as you can control it, it will always stay on screen until it collides with something. Commando Bomb is quite powerful. The bomb itself only deals 2 damage, but the explosion it causes does a ton of damage. It causes a spread shot effect that can deal up to 10 damage. Against enemies, Commando Bomb's pretty good as long as you use the splash damage from the weapon and not the bomb itself. You can get some big damage. Although it can become awkward when you try to control this weapon against enemies. There's even some fancy interactions where you can warp this weapon into the ceiling and hit blocks that you're technically not supposed to. And you can even shoot through walls like this as well. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 10 Water Shield, originally given to you by Pump Man, creates a shield made up of 8 water bubbles. The shield can also be shot, which spirals the water bubbles around Mega Man. When you shoot Water Shield, it shoots in a clockwise direction, and the 8 little pieces of water spread across the entire screen. Each piece of Water Shield deals 2 damage, so essentially you have a 16 damage shield. Like most shields in Mega Man Maker, Water Shield is very good against enemies. You can use this weapon offensively as a projectile and deal damage across the screen, or you can use this weapon defensively and use it as a shield and walk through damage. The durability on this weapon is crazy. And because it's a water weapon, it allows you to walk through certain types of fire with it. You can even jump into acid water and change the balance of acid and water types, which is good against acid man water. And you can even walk on lava with it. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 10 Wheel Cutter, originally given to you by Nitro Man, shoots a wheel that rolls across the floor and can roll up walls. You can also hold this out of Mega Man's Buster to deal damage over time. One shot, Wheel Cutter always remains rolling, so it's gonna look for the first available wall or floor to ride on. And they won't disappear until they lose durability. 
When shot, wheel cutter deals two damage. When you stick it out of your buster, it deals 0.3 damage over time, which means we have to hit this big eye 60 times to kill it. So it deals more damage to shoot it. Against enemies, wheel cutter can be pretty good. You just have to shoot it a lot and use it with combination of sticking it out of your buster to deal the best damage. But this is really a mobility weapon. Just look at this movement. The best part about wheel cutter is the mobility. You can use it and fly up all kinds of walls in the game. You can even do zigzags through spikes. You can make it really crazy. This weapon shines with mobility. This weapon is really, really good. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 10 Mirror Buster, originally given to you by Anchor. Mirror Buster is a pseudo shield that sticks out of Mega Man's Buster and reflects all enemy projectiles. It does not only reflect projectiles, but it transforms them into a laser beam that penetrates through enemies horizontally. And note, if there's no sources of damage to reflect, then the weapon is essentially useless. Mirror Buster deals 3 damage and only uses 1 weapon energy. It can also be spammed as long as there's enough projectiles on screen. Against enemies, Mirror Buster is not really that good. You have to remember, you can only use this weapon when there's projectiles being shot at you and a lot of enemies don't even shoot. And if the enemy does shoot, you have to make sure you're standing in a horizontal position of it to make sure the damage connects. But hey, you can slide with it. Although Mirror Buster might not be the best against enemies, it is pretty good against bosses. Most bosses are trying to kill you, so you can just reflect their shots right back at them. This works the best against shielded bosses because you can reflect their shields right back at them. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 10 Screw Crusher, originally given to you by Punk, shoots peppermint candy pinwheel shaped projectiles. I'm pretty sure they're blades, but they look like peppermint candies. Screw Crusher shoots in a giant arc that causes the blades themselves to travel slowly from low to high. This works kind of like the throwing axe from the Castlevania series. You shoot the weapon and it has a little bit of a lob and an arc to it. You have 224 weapon energy. Yes, 224 weapon energy, but each shot only deals one damage. One damage is not a lot. Screw Crusher is not the best against enemies because it takes forever to the projectiles to actually travel to the enemy. Plus, it only deals one damage and it works like Metal Blade, so you can't walk and shoot at the same time. It's very awkward. It's best against enemies in the air. Against objects, Screw Crusher is good for dealing with on-off switches, various breakable blocks, out-of-reach platforms, and you can even shoot in different levels of gravity for smaller, tighter arcs or really big lob shots. You can also have four on screen at once. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 10 Ballad Cracker, originally given to you by Ballad, shoots a spinning bomb that can be fired in multiple directions. If Ballad Cracker makes contact with the wall, floor, or ceiling, it will explode causing splash damage. Ballad Cracker works very similarly to Metal Blade, except Metal Blade shoots in 8 directions, Ballad Cracker can only shoot in 7, it cannot shoot down. But you can shoot up, left, right, up, left, down, left, up, right, and down, right. Ballot Cracker deals 3 damage, which is the same as a fully charged buster shot. You can only have one on screen and you get 56 shots with full ammo. You cannot shoot Ballot Cracker and walk at the same time, so you find yourself canceling it more than normal to get good DPS in. This weapon's really good because of its angles, and you can even explode splash damage through walls. Against objects, you can snipe on-off switches and breakable objects, move light push blocks, and even shoot your own feet to escort moving platforms. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 11 Block Dropper, originally given to you by Blockman, drops four blocks from the ceiling that fall across the screen. When shot, Block Dropper drops four blocks from the ceiling. The closest block to Mega Man is about three tiles away, and the furthest block from Mega Man is about nine tiles away. If enemies or objects are too close, Block Dropper will not hit anything. Each block from Block Dropper deals 4 damage, so each shot is a total of 16 damage. However, there aren't many enemies that are long enough to get hit by all 4 blocks at once. Shown here is an enemy dying in 1 block, 2 blocks, and 3 blocks. With Block Dropper, spacing is critical. Against enemies, Block Dropper can be pretty good as long as you can anticipate enemies scrolling on screen. You can also stack damage by hitting enemies with 2 blocks at once for max damage. Against bosses, you can use Block Dropper to stack damage, which is hitting a boss with two blocks at once. Some bosses are easier to stack damage with, but you should always look for this. Oh, you can also cancel spam it and make it rain! Subscribe for more! Mega Man 11 Bounce Ball, originally given to you by Bounce Man, shoots three balls that bounce off of walls, ceilings, and floors. Bounce Ball can be shot in three different angles. You can hold no direction when shooting it, you can hold down when shooting it, or you can hold up when shooting it, all resulting in different angled shots. It even works well in corners. 
Bounce Ball shoots three separate balls that deal one damage each. Shown here is a big guy dying in seven different shots, and also the same big guy dying in only one shot. Just look at this one ball hit like 12 times. Against enemies, Bounce Ball is pretty good because more often than not, you're stacking three damage at once. Also, you have a lot of control with this weapon and can determine the angles at which you're stacking damage. Against bosses, Bounce Ball can be insane. If the boss has a primary weakness of Bounce Ball, you can literally kill bosses in three hits. Just line up the right angle and bam, three balls to the face. It even works great in the corner. Just stand in the corner and mash your balls. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 11 Pile Driver, originally given to you by Impact Man, pile drives forward for six tiles dealing damage on impact. Pile Driver plunges Mega Man forward six tiles dealing damage. You can just spam Pile Driver to move really fast. It also works really well in the air. You can just spam Pile Driver and essentially fly across multiple screens. Pile Driver deals four damage on impact and four damage on release, totaling eight damage per hit. With Pile Driver, no enemy stands in your way. You can just spam this weapon in the enemy's face and you will always get through it, assuming you have the weapon energy. Every time that you shoot Pile Driver, you use three weapon energy. But man, this weapon just goes through every enemy in the game and you just fly through the entire game. Also, one of the best mobility weapons in the game. Pile Driver is so good, it lets you get over four tile high gaps. You can back boost off the wall and make a four tile high jump. You can also fast cancel spam off a wall and climb vertically. Pile Driver is so broken, you go horizontally and vertically. One of the best weapons in the game. Subscribe for more. Mega Man 11 Scramble Thunder, originally given to you by Fuse Man, shoots two balls of electricity that trail across the floor and ceiling. Scramble Thunder is shot on the ground by default, but it can also be aimed in the air. You can have six Scramble Thunder balls on the screen at once, and each shot consumes two weapon energy. Scramble Thunder shoots out two balls of electricity that deal four damage each. Depending on your spacing, you can deal eight damage by getting both shots off at once. Against enemies, Scramble Thunder can be pretty awkward as it only shoots on the ground, walls, and ceiling. So if an enemy is kind of floating in the air, you have to shoot it exactly on top of it or exactly below it. And of course, since Scramble Thunder is an electric weapon, it can activate on-off switches with crazy patterns, activate fuse crawlers and lasers, magnetic coils, and you can even push and pull boxes, and it even gives off a trail of light in the dark. This weapon can even help you with mobility and cross six tile gaps. Overall, amazing utility weapon. Subscribe for more. Ice Wall from Mega Man and Base, originally given to you by Cold Man, creates a giant wall of ice that you can ride. When shot, Ice Wall creates a giant wall of ice that you can push while walking into it. You can also stop Ice Wall at any time by pressing down and shoot at the same time. And it has tons of durability. One Ice Wall does 16 damage. Against enemies, you can push Ice Wall and shoot your buster at the same time for maximum damage. As long as you're walking with the Ice Wall or even riding it, you can stay consistent with the weapon and deal tons of damage. Ice Wall is one of the most unique weapons in the game because you create a physical platform that you can ride and push. And it also freezes fire, stops laser beams, astro gates, and can even freeze firewalls. And of course, the coolest part of this weapon is being able to jump off of it for about 7 tiles. You could even ride it in the water, and if you're base, you can double jump off of it, and it's super fun. It does require some practice and dexterity, but cool movement! Subscribe for more! Mega Man and Base Wave Burner, originally given to you by Burner Man, shoots a wave of fire that continuously sways up and down. Underwater, it shoots air. Wave Burner incinerates everything in its path as it sways up and down. When shot underwater, it deals no damage, but it moves objects forward. Wave Burner is made up of six separate sprites that deal six damage over time. Now this is big boy damage. Just watch as you can hold Wave Burner and walk right with Mega Man and decimate everything in your path. This is easily one of the highest damaging weapons in the entire game. You can just hold right, hold this weapon in, and you will destroy everything. It's super broken. A nice way this weapon is balanced is by doing no damage underwater, but you can push enemies. Against objects, you can push light push blocks, you can also ignite oil, you can even break ice of all kinds, including blizzard pillars, ignite TNT blocks, and of course, help see in the dark. Overall, this weapon is way too powerful. Subscribe for more. Copy Vision for Mega Man and Base, originally given to you by Astro Man, creates a clone of Mega Man that shoots 28 bullets that deal 2 damage each. When shot, Mega Man creates a clone of himself that shoots horizontally 28 times. The clone disappears when you leave the screen or cancel the weapon. Each shot from Copy Vision deals 2 damage, that's twice Mega's Buster. 
against enemies, copy vision can be pretty good. You just kind of whip out your clone and run with it. You can shoot with it, which means you're doing three damage with every two bullets. So you just kind of decimate things in your path. So just whip out your clone and walk forward and shoot with it. You can also use the copy to attract enemies and they will not attack Mega Man. They'll attack the clone instead. Copy Vision has some unique interactions with objects, like walking across precisely timed on-off blocks, baiting Bakazura block shooters, and even shooting movable platforms. Overall, this weapon's really strong, but it does require some precise setups. What's stronger than one Mega Man? Two Mega Man! Subscribe for more! Mega Man and Base Spread Drill, originally given to you by Ground Man, shoots a big drill that can spread into two drills, which can spread into four drills. Each shot is two weapon energy. The first drill flops down at an arc, one spread it shoots two drills in the middle, once that spread it shoots one high, one low, and two middle. Every piece of spread drill deals two damage, so it doesn't matter if you split it twice or four times, it's still going to deal two damage. What matters is spacing. Better spacing means more damage. Against enemies, spread drill is a powerhouse, plus you can determine when you shoot it and when you spread it, so you can do a lot of damage. It's all about your spacing and your timing and splitting your shots. You can really stack damage and abuse this weapon with, with perfect spacing. One of the more powerful weapons in the game if you know how to spread it. Spread it. One of the coolest thing this weapon does is make escort levels. You can just spread the drills and negate some of the shots and follow one drill all the way down a path and it can be quite fun. Subscribe for more. Tengu Blade from Mega Man and Base, originally given to you by Tengu Man, shoots a blade that can bounce off of walls or can be used as a dash with invincibility frames. When shot, Tengu Blade shoots upward at an arc until it hits a wall and then it will bounce. You can also use Tengu Blade as a dash which is done by pressing slide. This kind of acts as a pseudo base dash. Tango Blade is kind of interesting how it deals damage. You can shoot the blade and deal 4 damage, or you can get super close to an enemy and hit it with the starting animation to deal 3 damage at a time. Or you can use your iframes and slide through the enemy, dealing 2 damage each time. This weapon is certainly not the best damage dealer and it's kind of awkward. Tango Blade is not the best against enemies because you have to be standing to do the highest form of damage with the weapon. Dealing 2 damage as you slide through an enemy probably won't kill it. In my opinion, the best part of this weapon is the movement. You can basically turn Mega Man into base and fly around all crazily like, and it's super fun. And don't forget, iframes are insane. Subscribe for more. Magic card from Mega Man and Base, originally given to you by Magic Man. Magic card can shoot in three directions, left, right, and up. It cannot shoot down or diagonals, and you cannot walk and shoot at the same time. Each magic card deals a whopping 1 damage, which means just like Mega Buster, you have to mash like a maniac to do the weapon justice, or you can double mash. Against enemies, magic card is kind of trash. You have to stand still when you use it, and it only deals 1 damage. It's like a worse Mega Buster. It does have really good range, and it does get enemy drops, but it's still not worth the lack of damage. The coolest thing about magic card is its ability to get enemy drops upon death with its boomerang effect. You can use magic card and shoot it through walls and bring items back to Mega Man. As shown, many items like health or energy can be grabbed and returned, but not all items. You can also use magic card on certain platforms to change their direction without activating them physically. Overall, this weapon is terrible for damage, but has great utility, and that's magical. Subscribe for more. Rockman World 5 Grab Buster, originally given to you by Mercury, shoots straight forward stealing energy from enemies and heals for 2 health each. Grab Buster shoots straight, and you can have 3 shots on the screen at once, and each shot uses 1.5 weapon energy. Awkward break points. Grab Buster only deals 1 damage at a time, and because you only have 19 shots with it, you can't kill any enemies with 20 or more health. Once you land a shot with Grab Buster, you'll receive 2 healing from a little orb. In terms of dealing damage, this weapon kinda sucks. However, it is a utility weapon, so you aren't really meant to deal a lot of DPS. The healing properties on this weapon are what make it insane. Mega Man only has 28 health, however, you can get 38 health worth of value from full weapon energy. That's more than an E-Tank. This weapon is really good if you don't have any E-Tanks and you just need some quick healing, you can switch to this weapon and heal up fast. The more health an enemy has, the more healing you can get from it. There's even some enemies that don't die to Mega Buster and you can farm them for infinite health. Now that's a lot of healing. Subscribe for more. Rockman World 5 Saltwater, originally given to you by Neptune, shoots a ball of saltwater that can split into three small droplets if you shoot it at the floor, wall, or ceiling. You can angle saltwater in three directions, neutral, up, and down. 
Salt water can be shot in three different directions, and you can take advantage of the weapon split by shooting it in a corner or at a floor. This will result in more damage. Salt water deals two damage on its own, however if you split the weapon by shooting it at a wall ceiling or floor, you can effectively triple its damage. Salt water is awkward because to deal maximum damage you have to split the weapon into three droplets by breaking it near the targeted enemy and not actually shoot the enemy. You have to work way too hard for max damage and you can't even walk and shoot. And of course, because it's a water weapon, you can take advantage of its water properties and extinguish certain types of fire. You can even change acid levels in water. Overall, this weapon really sucks and gets me mega salty. Subscribe for more. Rockman World 5 Electric Shock, originally given to you by Jupiter, shoots a pulsing electric shock that stays in a static position like a melee weapon. Once you shoot in a direction, you cannot move out of that direction unless you stop shooting or cancel. Electric Shock stays in front of Mega Man's Buster and shoots three tiles long. This weapon cannot be shot as a projectile, and you cannot turn around once it's active. Electric Shock deals four damage on hit or every time it ticks. Against enemies, Electric Shock is mediocre at best. It does deal four damage, and four damage is great, but the fact that you cannot turn around while it's active, it makes for awkward breakpoints. Against objects, since it's an electric weapon, you can interact with tons of stuff in the game, like fuse crawlers, fuse man lasers, push and pull magnetic blocks, activate magnetic coils, and of course, shine some light in the dark. Overall, the weapon deals decent damage, but the movement restrictions make it kinda bad. I would not say this weapon is shocking. Subscribe for more. Rockman World 5 Breakdash, originally given to you by Pluto, shoots a buster shot for 2 damage or can be charged into a dash. Buster shots consume no energy and charge shots consume 3 energy. Once charged, you can dash horizontally for 7 tiles with invincibility frames. You can also destroy weapon blocks and Pluto blocks that are directly under your feet as well. Each buster shot from Breakdash deals 2 damage. You can also deal double damage by dashing into your shots. Against enemies, breakdash is insane. Against smaller enemies, you just shoot them for 2 damage with your lemons, but against larger enemies, you just slap on your iframes and dash and shoot your way right through them. Iframes are busted. The best part of breakdash is the movement. You can dash through the entire game with invincibility frames. Against bosses, you can do whatever you want. If the boss has a shield, just dash through it and shoot while standing inside of them. Even if it's the big man Dr. Wily himself, he doesn't stand a chance against breakdash. Breakdash? More like broken dash. Subscribe for more. Rockman World 5 Spark Chaser, originally given to you by Terra, shoots a spark that travels in a line that homes to the closest available enemy. Spark Chaser is a homing projectile that hits the first available target. You can have four Spark Chasers on the screen at once. When there's no targets available, it hovers over Mega Man's head. Spark Chaser deals one damage each time it hits an enemy. It also lasts four seconds on screen. Most of the time, as soon as it hits an enemy, it moves to another direction, causing a double hit. Against enemies, Spark Chaser is the ultimate lazy man's weapon. Just like Dive Missile, Magnet Missile, Hornet Chaser, and other, this weapon does all the work for you. The only downside to Spark Chaser is you only have 10 shots with it, so it does run out pretty quickly. But this is definitely an overpowered weapon. Against bosses, Spark Chaser is nuts. You just shoot it and watch it do all of the work while you avoid boss movement and projectiles. And then before you know it, bam, the boss is dead. Even if the boss doesn't have a weakness, the convenience of the homing properties make all bosses super easy. Almost too easy. Too easy. Subscribe for more. Rockman World 5 Tango, originally given to you by Dr. Light, shoots a regular buster shot for one damage or can be charged that sends out a cute green kitty that attacks enemies. Tango will always try to move horizontally while bobbing up and down and will always follow Mega Man's direction so you can help control where he goes. For the most part, Tango's a good boy. Tango deals one damage every time it ticks and the longer Tango's inside an enemy, the more damage it can deal. Against enemies, Tango can be a good boy. As long as you're just shooting enemies with your buster while your cat is jumping all over the place, you can deal some good damage. Although sometimes he moves unpredictably. Against bosses, Tango's a powerhouse. Just charge up your buster, unleash the beast, and watch the cat do all the work. You can just focus on running around the boss pattern and avoiding damage while your cat has the time of his life. You can also use buster in combination with Tango to really keep the damage flowing. If you balance shooting it between the Tango attacks, you can maximize your DPS. Overall, Tango's a good ass boy. Subscribe for more. 
Mega Man Maker Shine, originally derived from Fox's down special move in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Shine creates a hexagonal barrier that can reflect most projectiles. It also covers Mega Man completely, so you can use it to cover every direction. Shine deals 1 damage every time it's pressed inside an enemy, so this big eye dies in 20 hits. Against enemies, Shine is really good as long as enemies are shooting projectiles at you, you can simply stand and reflect everything at them and kill them with their own projectile. Shine can also deal with Mega Man Maker's infamous enemy spam. Movement with Shine can be really fun. You can hold Shine and jump on bounce balls or springs to get a really big boost. You can also mash like a maniac and hover over pits or big gaps. Or you could take advantage of Vase's dash trajectory and get a little more dash momentum. You can also be a filthy cheater and use Turbo Button and literally fly over the whole level. Shine is great against bosses because you can just stand still and reflect everything back at the boss, causing the boss to essentially kill themselves. You can also just stand AFK against certain bosses and bully them in the corner. You can even one-hit KO Metal Man, one of my favorite weapons in the game. Subscribe for more. Mega Man Maker Nato, originally from Meta Knight's neutral special move in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. When you shoot and hold Nato, you turn into a tornado that can rise up to 9 tiles high, 16 tiles long. After Nato's duration ends, you must touch the ground before you can use it again, or you can cancel this weapon for maximum efficiency. Each shot uses 5 weapon energy, so you can only use Nato 6 times. With full control, Nato lets you fly anywhere you want to, one of my favorite weapons in the whole game. Nato lets you fly inside enemies with invincibility frames, dealing 1 damage each time it ticks. Against enemies, Nato can be pretty good as long as you avoid all the projectiles. You can easily get sniped out of Nato from enemy projectiles. Now for the best part, the movement. The more control you have with Nato, the more you can precisely fly around the game. Canceling this weapon lets you fly in tighter areas. Against bosses, Nato can be decent as long as you can avoid boss projectiles. Also, only having 6 shots, it's hard to kill bosses without a weakness. Overall, this weapon is extremely fun. Don't say nay to Nato, say yay to Nato. You Nato, you Nato. Subscribe for more. Mega Man Maker Command Selection, originally inspired from Heroes Abilities and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This weapon is something. Oh man, where to begin? So this weapon allows you to use one of four randomly selected weapons including special items and utilities. Activating it requires one energy and you only get one shot with each weapon. Command selection is essentially every weapon in the game except Super Arm and the adapters for Mega Man 6. Once you see your four options, you don't have to use one, you can cancel, but it uses your energy. Movement with command selection is one of the most fun things in the game, especially if you like gambling. You can get lucky and instantly roll a weapon that helps you progress a certain section, or you can waste all of your energy re-rolling until you find one. There are two abilities that can only be used from command selection. They're called Kamikaze and Heal. Heal allows you to refill 4 health and keep rolling for health to fill your life. Kamikaze allows you to do a giga attack and screen wipe every enemy or boss, but you do go down to 1 HP. The weapon's slow, but has tons of potential for high rewarding moments. RNG take the wheel. Subscribe for more. Mega Man Maker Perfect Freeze, originally derived from Toho, embodiment of Scarlet Devil, sprays a barrage of ice pellets. When shot, P Freeze sprays outward like a cone or fan and completely fills the area with little ice pellets. They can last up to 3 seconds on screen. You have 374 weapon energy and the damage values are weird. You only deal 1 damage once 5 ice pellets connect, so just because you hit 5 times doesn't mean you deal 5 damage. More ice pellets, more damage. P Freeze is very good against enemies as you can just hold in the shoot button, spray and pray, and watch all the enemies melt. P Freeze is also a great way to handle enemy spam levels. You can also fire and spurts to stack damage. Because it's an ice weapon, P Freeze can freeze fire pillars, lava variants, and even firewalls. P Freeze is great against bosses as well because you can stack some serious damage by layering your shots. Just be careful not to freeze Freeze Man because he will taunt you and heal from it. P Freeze is so strong you can kill Wily before he spawns. Just whip out your P Freeze and spray it everywhere. Subscribe for more. Mega Man Maker Uber Chain, originally derived from Team Fortress 2, a short range melee attack that grants invincibility when the weapon energy is full. A pet favorite weapon from Mega Man Maker's lead programmer. Uber Chain begins with empty weapon energy, but every attack landed fills it up. Once full energy is reached, Mega Man is granted invincibility frames for 10 seconds. Uber Chain deals 2 damage, however there's a random chance that you can land a critical hit. This happens at random, the weapon may display a critical hit message, and you deal 6 damage to enemies, which is triple damage. Uber Chain is a very slow weapon, however you can speed up your damage by attacking midair and resetting the animation by landing on the ground. Every time you strike an enemy with Uber Chain, you receive 3.5 weapon energy, which means you need 8 strikes to completely fill your meter. You can also fill your meter by picking up weapon drops. Your reward for shanking 8 enemies is the ability to get invincibility frames. Any weapon with invincibility frames is insane and this weapon is no exception. Also, when your iframes run out, you alternate colors and you hear this cute little jingle. Subscribe for more. 
Rush Coil, originally from Mega Man 3. Let's Mega Man jump off of his dog Rush, and you can also use your Mega Buster. Rush Coil spawns one tile away from Mega Man and lets him jump up to seven tiles high, and you can shoot up to nine tiles high. You can also jump over six tile wide gaps. Rush Coil doesn't work in two tile gaps, you need at least three tiles of horizontal space to spawn him. Same for vertical spacing, you need at least three tiles of space before you're able to jump. Rush spawns up to four tiles higher than Mega Man, after four tiles he will not spawn. And Rush will also not spawn if you're more than three tiles above him. Sometimes he's a bad boy. Rush Coil lets you jump seven tiles high and each time costs two weapon energy. That means you can use Rush Coil 14 times before running out of juice. Rush Coil works on many objects like bombs, Yoku blocks, spikes, rising and lowering platforms, gravity fields, jet platforms, and more. He does not work in sand or bounce on bounce balls. He also doesn't work in teleporters or lava. But he also works with spikes, lasers, fire, and you can even of course get bigger jumps underwater. Good doggy. Subscribe for more. Rush Jet, originally from Mega Man 3, lets Mega Man jump on his dog Rush and ride him horizontally and vertically. This is not like the original Mega Man 3 Rush Jet that acted more like a personal hover. Rush Jet lets Mega Man get as high as he wants as long as there's weapon energy and no ceiling. You can also use your Mega Buster with Rush Jet. Rush needs at least three vertical tiles of space before there's room to jump on him. You also cannot spawn Rush at the very top of the screen. While on Rush, if you hold the opposite direction, you can slow down your movement speed. You can also use Rush like a step stool for little jump boosts. Rush Jet is known for being able to cheese levels by just flying around everything or just hovering at the top of the screen. It also does last 28 seconds and you can squeeze the two tile gaps, it's pretty good. Rush Jet is so good that you can let him touch fire beams, electric beams, lasers, spikes, lava. He even works in the water like Rush Submarine and even goes through sand. You can use Rush Jet with Rush Coil to do a fancy combo. You can also use Rush Jet like a magnet beam and slide through him as he's flying. Now that's a good doggy. Subscribe for more. Magnet Beam, originally from Mega Man 1, shoots temporary beams that act as platforms. You can only have three magnet beams on screen at once and they deal no damage. Each magnet beam uses two weapon energy, it can go 11 tiles long. Magnet Beam shoot directly straight and let Mega Man get as high as he wants. Magnet Beam is the original gangster of broken weapons. Besides zips that don't work in current patch, you can cheese everything in the game by walking over it. As long as you have the weapon energy, you can go as high as the ceiling, but be careful, once you hit the ceiling, you can knock it back down using Magnet Beam. Against enemies, Magnet Beam deals zero damage, but again, you can just whip out your beams and start making a staircase. Why kill enemies when you can just walk above them like they don't exist? Or if you don't want to take the high road, you can just take the low road and slide under the enemies. With properly spaced shots, you can dodge almost everything. If you shoot near the edge of the screen, Magnet Beam doesn't work. It only can shoot so small. Also, if you shoot Magnet Beam against the ceiling, you can hover slide through the Magnet Beam itself and pixel perfect slides. Unlike Rush Jet, there's no wiggling required. Subscribe for more. Item 1, originally from Mega Man 2, is one of the three transport items created by Dr. Light. Item 1 is a levitating platform that rises about 4 tiles and uses 2 weapon energy each use. Item 1 is pretty good against enemies because you can simply create platforms and jump over everything in the game. You can even use Item 1 to go under enemies. As long as there's space you can make steps and climb as high as the screen lets you. It's super fun to do. Item 1 lets you cross pits and other hazards with ease. Just be mindful that you can only have three Item 1s on screen at once. The better you are at spacing out your shots vertically and horizontally with this weapon, the better off you'll be with it. Along with horizontal movement, you can also climb high vertically by shooting Item 1 in a zigzag staircase pattern and scale to the top really fast. However, sometimes you have to screen wipe your own platforms by neutral jumping to progress. You can also use Item 1 to lift you into slidable areas. It comes in handy if you have patience. Item 1 is decent against objects. You can carry movable blocks, soccer balls, and stop fuse turrets. It doesn't interact with all objects, but does come in handy. Subscribe for more. Item 2, originally from Mega Man 2, is one of the three transport items created by Dr. Light. Item 2 is a red jet sled that can carry Mega Man and pass long gaps. Once you're on Item 2, you cannot move it up or down. Item 2 is good against enemies if you have the place to use it. You can make your way to the top of the screen, use Item 2, and fly over all of your problems. The movement for item 2 is pretty good as it travels pretty fast. This allows Mega Man to cross nearly any pit or gap. You can even go through orange, green, and red lasers, sand, and other objects. Just hop on your jet sled and cruise. 
There's also a cool trick where you can cancel item 2 after you jump off of it and spawn another one, allowing you to build stairs as high as possible. This works the easiest if item 2 is your only weapon, and it feels really good once you get the rhythm. Another thing that you can do with item 2 is line it up perfectly into a slideable gap and slide off item 2 into a cubby. Like item 1, item 2 is decent against objects. You can carry movable blocks, stop soccer balls, and fuse turrets. You can even drag movable blocks with it to create a fancy puzzle. Another great utility weapon. Subscribe for more. Item 3, originally from Mega Man 2, is one of the three transport items created by Dr. Light. Item 3 is a crawling platform that can be used as an elevator once it's latched onto a wall. If there's no wall to crawl on, item 3 simply bounces forward on the ground until there is a wall to climb on. While on item 3, if you jump, the platform lowers, so be careful not to jump too much or you'll make it touch the ground and disappear. Against enemies, item 3 isn't as good as item 1 or item 2, however you can still precisely dodge enemies with good platforming, spacing, and timing. Item 3 works in the water, and the physics allow the platform to bounce slower and higher. You can also just shoot Item 3, jump on the platform, bob up and down with it, and go for a little ride. You can also jump repeatedly over hazards and maintain position on the platform. Just be careful when climbing. Item 3 will resolve once there's nowhere to climb. You can quickly jump up and reshoot another if you time it properly. And of course, Item 3 does work on spikes. You can even infinitely jump with Item 3 if you're a god gamer. Item 3 is so useful, you can even climb frozen firewalls. One of the hardest weapons to master. Subscribe for more. Super Arrow, originally from Mega Man 5, can be used to attack or create platforms and can also be ridden to cover long distances. Super Arrow can also be shot on walls and does not break weapon blocks. Each Super Arrow deals 2 damage and you only get 14 shots with max energy. Against enemies, Super Arrow is decent as it does deal 2 damage, however it has a slow startup and you only have 14 shots, so it's not ideal to kill enemies. But you can just fly over everything. The best part of Super Arrow is the movement. You can create little staircases or a straight line vertically and just fly over the entire game. As long as there's no obstacles, you can fly straight over everything. And don't forget you cannot move Super Arrow up or down. And don't forget that you can also use Super Arrow to slide into cubbies. Against bosses, Super Arrow is kind of insane. You can stack three arrows on top of each other and deal triple damage. This does require some knowledge on boss patterns and setups, but it's pretty easy. This makes all primary boss fights only three hits each. You can also get very precise shots under stationary enemies and bosses and escort them with Super Arrow. Absolutely insane weapon. Subscribe for more. Jet Adapter, originally from Mega Man 6. Mega Man gets combined with his dog Rush and can fly for a short period of time. Jet Adapter lets Mega Man fly up to 10 tiles vertically and 12 tiles horizontally. Pretty good mobility weapon. With Jet Adapter, you can also use your Mega Buster. Against enemies, Jet Adapter has the same damage values as Mega Buster, which is 1 damage each. Jet Adapter is decent against enemies, especially the ones in the air, but you cannot charge shot or slide, so it's awkward. The convenience of having a jetpack makes movement very effective. You can use Jet Adapter to fly 10 tiles high, but you must touch the ground to reset its energy before you can fly again. Jet Adapter is also good for hovering into tight spaces. The better you are controlling it, the easier it is to fly between 4, 3, and even 2 tile gaps. There's also a bug, aka a feature, that lets you go more than 10 tiles high if you land on the ground at the same time you charge it. This only works when Jet Adapter is the primary weapon, but it does allow Mega Man to go to infinity and beyond. Please devs, don't patch this. Subscribe for more. Power Adapter, originally from Mega Man 6. Mega Man combines with his dog Rush and gets a suit of thick, thick, thick power armor. While equipped, Mega Man can punch and even charge punch. In my opinion, this is the worst adapter weapon, but it still has its uses. You can throw projectile punches up to 6 tiles long or charge it for a bigger, closer punch that reaches 2 tiles long. Once charged, you'll want to be up close and personal to the target for maximum effectiveness. Projectile punches deal 2 damage each, which is double the Mega Man Buster Shot, and charge punches deal double damage, which is 4 damage. Against enemies, Power Adapter isn't the best. You can't walk and shoot at the same time, so you're always stopped and you have to wait to charge for your biggest damage output. Plus, you always have to be close to enemies, which is never ideal. Against objects, Power Adapter is a powerhouse. You can interact with so many different types of blocks, whether it's punching them or breaking them or even moving them. You can even punch stacked boxes, and it does break most weapon blocks, but not every type. And you can also punch boxes in reverse with a precise shot. Overall, pretty clunky weapon. Subscribe for more. Super Adapter, originally from Mega Man 7. Mega Man gets combined with his dog Rush and gets a suit of super armor. While equipped, you can shoot normal buster shots with super armor. You can even charge your shot for a special attack. This attack is called Rocket Buster, and you can shoot a homing fist that tracks and hits enemies. You can also cancel a charge fist once it connects so you don't have to wait for it to come back to Mega Man. Save those frames. A charged Rocket Buster attack deals 4 damage, so it takes 5 fully charged shots to kill this 20 health big guy.
Against the enemy, Super Adapter is pretty decent as you have access to Mega Buster, plus the ability to charge homing shots. And of course this weapon is really good against enemies in the air. Super Armor is actually Power Adapter and Jet Adapter combined, which means you have great movement. You also have access to a move called Booster Jump, which effectively lets Mega Man pseudo double jump. You can cross 8 tile white gaps horizontally and 6 tiles high vertically. There's also a cool interaction involving magnetic ceilings in which you can reset your Booster Jump with it, allowing you to cling and uncling. It's really fun movement. Subscribe for more. Protocoil, originally given to you in Mega Man 9, functions equally to its counterpart Rush Coil. When shot, Protocoil spawns one tile away and lets Proto Man jump seven tiles high and shoots nine tiles high. You can also jump over six tile wide gaps. This works the same way as Mega Man's Rush Coil. Protocoil lets you jump seven tiles high and costs two weapon energy. That means you can use Protocoil 14 times before running out of juice. You can also place Protocoil on spikes or other hazards and safely jump off of it. It also looks like a springboard. Protocoil works with many objects, like green lasers, orange lasers, red lasers, rising and lowering platforms, spikes, fire, underwater, and much more. And just like Rush Coil, it does not work on bounce balls or in sand. Protocoil is really good against bosses that like to hang out in the air, such as Sheet Man, Astro Man, Shade Man, even Wily and Cossack, and much more. You can take advantage of the jump boost and get really high to get your shots off that you need. Overall, it's a pretty convenient tool. Subscribe for more. Protojet, originally from Mega Man 9, lets Proto Man jump on a red jet sled and ride horizontally and vertically. This is exactly like Rush Jet, however, it's Proto Man's boring variant. Proto Man needs a dog. Protojet lets Proto Man get as high as he wants as long as there's weapon energy and no ceiling. You need at least three vertical tiles of space to jump on Protojet. And of course, you can use Proto Buster with it. While on Protojet, you can slow down your movement speed while holding the opposite direction of the way you're moving. This will help you with controlling Protojet so you don't bonk it into a wall. Just like Rushjet, you can fly around everything in the level as it lasts 28 seconds. And of course, you can even squeeze into two tile gaps. And of course, like Rushjet, Protojet can touch fire pillars, all laser types, sand, lava, water, and much more. Don't forget, you can also use Protojet as a stepping stool. And of course, just like Magnet Beam and Rush Jet, you can slide wiggle with Protojet through big gaps. Any wigglers in chat? Any wigglers in chat? Subscribe for more. Treble Boost, originally given to you in Mega Man and Base, when used, Treble is summoned in front of the player and basic buster shots can be fired. However, once Treble is touched, he and Base fuse together and enter Treble Boost. Base is immune to knockback while Treble Boost is active and energy is drained at two units per second. Against enemies, Trouble Boost can be pretty good as you can fly in any direction and shoot a 3-way spread shot. This is essential and lets you stack damage against enemies dealing 3 damage at a time when up close. You can completely obliterate any enemy with this weapon. And also, Trouble Boost is good at dealing with enemies in the air. Just take advantage of your mobility and your spread shot angles. Trouble Boost can be used in any direction, and unlike any other animal helper utility, it can be used mid-air by jumping into Trouble Spawn animation. Also, base bobs up and down slightly at all times while moving, so be careful of this when going into tight areas. Against bosses, Treble Boost is great because you can damage stack, and if a boss has a primary or secondary weakness with Treble Boost, you can just melt away their health in no time. Just get right up close and bam, damage stack. Amazing utility weapon. Subscribe for more. Tango Jump for Mega Man Maker. Let's roll call our trusty companion Tango the Cat. Once you spawn Tango, you can jump onto him and then off of him for big jump boosts. Tango Jump allows Roll to jump up to 7 tiles high and use her broomstick to reach things that are 10 tiles high. Tango Jump kind of works like Rush Coil from Mega Man 5, in which you jump on Tango, he goes vertically with you, and then you can jump again as he's going up or when he reaches maximum height. You can also place Tango on spikes and other hazards, but certainly not all of them. You can cross 5 tile gaps horizontally and even jump up to 7 tiles vertically. Against enemies, Tango Jump's not really the best because you have to wait for the spawn animation before you can even attack. Since you can use your broomstick, you can really only use Tango Jumps for mobility and help moving around enemies and reaching higher enemies in the air. Tango Jump kinda sucks when it comes to objects, just because the kitty's too tiny and doesn't protect you when you jump in lasers is shown. And there's also tons of objects in the game like Mega Man 6 Fire and multiple block types that Tango just won't spawn on. Now that's a bad kitty. Bad kitty. Subscribe for more. Flappy Beat from Mega Man Maker. However, Beat is originally from Mega Man 5, where Beat homed in on enemies and did damage. In Mega Man Maker, Beat is specific to roll and you can fly with them. With Flappy Beat, you can fly anywhere as long as you have weapon energy. You can flap 35 times before you run out. You can literally go anywhere. 
Flappy Beat is a reference to Flappy Bird the mobile game, which is why the movement looks so similar. You can fly horizontally while slowly dropping, so you must press jump to make Beat ascend or you'll fall. Certainly one of the best movement tools in the game. The more you bonk on a ceiling or spam jump, the more weapon energy you use, so be mindful of how much you're flapping your bird. Flapping your bird. Against enemies, Beat is decent, especially against enemies in the air. Beat is almost useless against grounded enemies since once you touch the floor, Beat disappears. Broomstick is the main source of damage, so you must get up close when you kill enemies. There's a bug in the game, aka a feature, aka secret technology, in which you take damage while on Beat at the same time you swing your broom. This makes Beat move a little faster and you can really fly like a bird. Please don't tell the developers. Subscribe for more. Did you know you could only have three lemons on screen at one time? The Mega Man 4 charge shot is very thin and cannot penetrate weapon blocks while standing. Mega Man 5 charge shots are very powerful and can pop blocks right under your feet. Mega Man 6 charge shot, which is thicker than Mega Man 4's, should be doing this? Gotta know your damage value. Some enemies die in one hit, some die in two, some die in three, all the way up to 10 or 20 hits. Stone Man is about to take one damage and then three damage, showing off the power of the Mega Buster. But you can also stack your Buster and get two damage. Boom, damage stack, baby. Bam, damage stack, baby. Proto Buster, Proto Man's default Mega Buster equivalent. For more information on Proto Buster, please watch the Mega Buster tutorial. We're gonna focus on Proto Strike, originally from Mega Man Power Up. Let's Proto Man shoot fully charged shots without charging. Proto Strike is super powerful as it has piercing properties and will continue to travel through items and enemies. The ability to pierce enemies is very strong. To use Proto Strike, you must toggle it in the settings menu when creating a level. Proto Strike deals three damage, the same as a charge shot. Against enemies, Proto Strike is one of the most powerful weapons in the game. You can kill mini bosses and other high health enemies very quickly, and you don't have to worry about weapon energy. It's super good. It also has one of the coolest sound effects in the game. This weapon just feels really good to use. Proto Strike is so strong, it can destroy multiple block types, pierce through rows of dust blocks, and you can even shoot light boxes with it. Just shoot the box and watch it fly. There's so many fancy things you can do by shooting objects under your feet with it as well. You can also move yourself on boxes across water. It's so strong, you have to toggle it on. Subscribe for more. Base Buster, originally for Mega Man and Base. Let's base rapid fire buster shots with auto fire, or you can single fire by lightly pressing shoot. Base Buster can be fired in seven directions, but it does stop at walls. Base Buster can shoot in seven different directions. Down left, 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 up, 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 right, right, down right. He cannot shoot straight down. When you hold shoot, base auto fires. Each buster shot deals 0.5 damage, which is half a normal mega buster shot. Shown here is a big eye dying with 40 manual presses and then auto fire. Base Buster is both good and bad against enemies. It's good because it goes up to 7 directions which is convenient, and it's bad because it takes forever to kill stuff and you can't walk and shoot at the same time. It just takes way too long to kill high health enemies. Against objects you can take advantage of the 7 directions and shoot all different types of blocks, platforms, buttons, and more. You can easily destroy ice blocks, dust blocks, and more. What lacks in damage is made up by versatility. Overall Base Buster is not too bad and it does make Base pretty unique as a character. Base in your face. Subscribe for more. Mega Man Maker Roll Swing. Roll can whip out her trusty broomstick that also happens to be a melee weapon. Yes, a broomstick. With Roll Swing, you can slash three times on the ground in a combo style, spin attack in the air, or even charge it for big damage. The hitbox on the broom is crazy big, so you can hit far above you and even below you. If you mash with Roll Swing, you naturally can combo, which consists of two one damage swings followed up by a big two damage swing. You can also cancel spam to do one damage at a time really fast, or you can simply charge it to deal three damage like a Mega Buster. Against enemies, Roll can be pretty good if you combo your enemies and know how to properly move with her. Because the broom is a melee weapon, you have to get up close to deal damage so it can be tricky. Against bosses, Roll has a tough time dealing with bosses in the air as she's stuck with her broomstick as a melee weapon. However, once you get up close, you can combo the boss and deal damage very fast. It doesn't matter if the boss has a primary, secondary, or no weakness at all, the boss will get wrecked by the broomstick. Clean it up, baby. Clean it up, baby. Clean it up, baby. Subscribe for more. Mega Man Maker's Nothing. Originally given to you by no one, this weapon does nothing. Every character can use nothing. When you press shoot, nothing happens. Nothing has no angles or directions. Once nothing is equipped, you can't do anything. This allows you to do absolutely nothing. 
When shot, nothing does no damage, but you can reflect with Proto Man. But that's not nothing. Against enemies, you can't do anything because you have nothing. But at least you can use nothing and walk through enemies while taking damage and still progress sections. Nothing is good against enemies because all you need is life. Against bosses, nothing can do something while being nothing. You can manipulate bosses into pits. When you press nothing, nothing happens and some bosses still respond to the input. With nothing, you can still do something. It's not nothing. It's just nothing. But nothing is something, you just have to know how to use nothing. There's also a bug in which you can reflect nothing at a nothing block. Don't try this at home, it won't do anything. It's nothing. Subscribe for nothing. Subscribe for more. God damn it, dude. Mega Marino. His name is Mega Marino.